Good afternoon and welcome to Treasures in the Field. This is our midweek podcast review here at Harvest Bible Church in Westland, Michigan. And we got a little different twist on our Treasures in the Field today. Uh, as you can see, Pastor uh, Mike is not able to join us, but we got our uh, youth director right here, Brent. Brent, thanks for coming out, man. It's, uh, it's good to be here. Yeah. Some big shoes to fill. Oh, yeah. You know, but uh, but uh, it's all good. It's all for God's honor and God's glory. So we're going to get after it. You know, on Sunday, uh, Pastor Mike was talking about uh, how seeing is believing. And in his sermon introduction, he talked about that statement, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. You know, we say that often. And I was thinking about this podcast and how you said to me, you know, at some point, you know, Brett, you're going to be on the podcast. And I would say to you, Randy, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> now, here we are. I see and I believe. Uh, but uh, it's good to be here, and, and thank you for having me on. Oh yeah, no thanks. Thanks for filling in. This is uh, it's just a great discussion. I mean, this is this is probably the uh, probably the, one of the easier podcasts because we're just going to sit back and and talk pretty much what we talk about anyway. It's just yeah. good points that we heard uh, from from Sunday's message. It's a uh, just a lot going on there, yeah. and yeah, it's like you talked about his his intro. He gave us a a very thorough understanding of really diving into just recognizing uh, that when we that, that we have been prayed for mm. by God, mm. um, and and I love it that he pointed out the fact that there's one point in the scripture where he says, "Blessed are those who have not seen and still believe." Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> Every time I think about that, I was like, hey, that's me. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's as me. I was sitting and listening on Sunday, yeah. I was just getting more and more excited to go out and actually live out what I was what I was learning from Pastor Mike, which is so exciting. It was very encouraging um, and inspiring, but also very challenging and convicting. Yeah. You know, um, as, as Pastor Mike's sermons always are. But I think this one really struck home for me and for a lot of other people as well, because I believe a lot of us can relate to... Uh, Thomas and yeah. in, in the same way he doubted there are times when when we uh, may doubt you know but ultimately we know uh, what Christ has done for us is doing for us and what he provides to us yeah um, and that's that's encouraging and that's what we need sometimes to get through those seasons of doubt exactly. um, and into those seasons of joy and serving yeah and I think that was the major point that stood out for me I remember uh, in taking notes and thinking this would be great podcast to talk about <laughs> Pastor Mike, but one of my notes, it simply said peace. Yeah. And so, it, uh, and it's not because Pastor Mike didn't thoroughly go into it, so if you have not, I would advise you to go uh, watch the video show right after this podcast. Go <laughs> watch the sermon. <laughs> go to go, the source first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to the sermon, and um, and he, he starts off for a good long time talking about peace. Yeah. Uh, and he connects it with the resurrection hope, and I, and I think it's important for us to talk, to re rehash it because it's not it's kind of like kind of like we just celebrated the resurrection uh two sundays ago and you can never get past the resurrection yeah it's an essential part of the christian doctrine Amen. uh every time we hear it it's going to edify us it's going to strengthen us it's going to give us keep, keep us back on core mission i believe that's right and i think the same thing can be said about understanding uh peace mm. that he talks about the peace that christ gives and and the power of that peace uh, especially when we're ch uh, challenging it against the world's view of peace. For you sure. understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because the world has this idea that peace is it's free of friction. Uh, it's you, we, me getting along with you, you getting along with me. We on a campfire singing Kumbaya and everything is right. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, that's not peace. That's conformity. Sure. <laughs> uh, Christ's peace is uh, we're going to have disagreements mm. but that's not gonna disturb me yeah it reminds me uh, i believe it was uh i believe it was within this series pastor mike preached a message and he showed a picture this famous picture mm. of the bird in the in the midst of this horrible storm all around it and it's in the nest sleeping mm. and uh and that's the gospel piece that's right where chaos is all around us we have this resurrection hope so my hope is not in you know how good my day is going mm -hmm. my hope is not in how healthy am i yeah uh, my hope is not in how good are my kids behaving right, <laughs> yeah right. i can relate to that one <laughs> <laughs> my hope is in uh jesus christ who's risen from the dead amen and uh yeah i think that's just 
one of those ones we just got to continue to hit home. Yeah. Continue to remember because we can we can lose focus. That's right. Yeah. And I love too how in John chapter 20, Jesus says those four words, peace be with you to the disciples. And he says it twice. Mm -hmm. He says it once in, in verse 19, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. And then again, in verse 21, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you as the father has sent me, even so I am sending you. So as Christ is sending us out to be his ambassadors, he gives us that peace. And as you mentioned, that's a peace that uh, surpasses all understanding. It is different. It is significantly different from the world's understanding of peace. Um, and I think you see that in conversations you have with people and that believers have with people. It's like, how can you respond this way in this unfortunate circumstance that you're experiencing? Well, it's the peace that I have. It's a peace that's rooted in, in, in uh, Christ's work on our behalf. It's rooted in his life, his death, his resurrection, and his future return mm -hmm. as well, uh, which I think is really, really important. And, um, you know, it's rooted in his faithfulness to us and his goodness to us. And somebody who doesn't know Christ can't understand that peace, but the disciples understood it, we understand it, and that completely transforms the way that we live and act and think and the things that we do, uh, especially as we're going out as ambassadors for Christ. And you see that, as we talked about before we started filming, we probably should have pressed record a little earlier. <laughs> but you, yeah. you see that in the disciples uh, and in what they do, uh, you know, post-Pentecost. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, like we were talking about, Acts is like one of my... At the very beginning of Acts is where we see this boldness mm. from, you have these disciples who were, as we were talking about in the Sunday's message, they were in a room, in a locked room, yeah, yeah. <laughs> scared of the Jewish leadership. <laughs> yeah. and, and here comes Christ and says, peace be with you. And uh, it's just, it's embodied in who Christ is. That's right. And, and he says, the, and he also gives us the assurance that the peace that he has, he gives to us. Mm. <laughs> and so now he sends these guys out who were once cowering, standing before the same people they were afraid of, uh, who are th threatening them to come with punishment if they continue to preach Christ mm. and told them not to do it. And they says, whether to obey you or to obey God, you decide. Yeah. We can't help but talk about what, what we've seen. And so uh, it's, a, it's like that resurrection hope. Yeah. It's the peace of Christ that, that, that emboldens us. So, yeah. yeah that had to just fire them up. And yeah. we see that even uh, in, in their response. You know, Jesus says again, peace be with you. And then he says it a second time. And then he says, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And then in verse 22, um, um, Oh, I'm, I'm missing my I'm missing my place here. Um, I'm sorry. It's in verse 20. Yeah. After the first time, Jesus says, "Peace be with you." It says, "When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side." Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. They were glad. They were thrilled. They were excited. They were encouraged, inspired. You just see that sense of, or you, even in reading that, you sense that that joy that they had. And I'm sure they were excited at that point to just get out and go because they had seen their Lord and their God dead in the tomb and then alive again and and that just had to just just send that shockwave through their system of let's go you know yeah. let's get after it and it does the same thing for us um, you know even though we're not direct eyewitnesses to that we we have their testimony and we can read that and we can be um, encouraged and inspired in the same way by that and we should be doing that we should yeah. be reading and reflecting and meditating on these scriptures day and night all day all night and It'll provide us that same sense of peace, but also that joy and that excitement to go and to make disciples of all nations. Yeah, yeah. I think when you were speaking of it, I, I, I love how Pastor Mike pointed out um, Thomas' response. Unless I see it uh, with my own uh, eyes, I won't believe it. Yeah. And and he had to remind us before we get too judgmental <laughs> that most likely that was. It had some of the Christians been, uh, other disciples been there, they might have had the same response. But uh, that's, truthfully, it made me realize that sometimes that's how we are. Yeah. Um, and then God, instead of, you know, coming with this correction, Thomas, how could you doubt? Mm -hmm. Did not I tell you? I mean, he has this long suffering, uh, just love for us yeah. as he does for Thomas. And he says, huh? And, and, he, and he shows him. And then, at this revelation, Thomas turns around and says, my Lord and my God. Yeah. 
like I said, so he's like you. He's fired up now. That's right. Now, yeah. now I recognize who Christ is. Yes. I've been sleeping on him. So. Yes. <laughs> and I recognize. And I think that's, that's, that's another takeaway point yeah. for us that when we see that and, and Pastor Mike put it so eloquently to say, you know, this is, he pointed out this is proof that this is not some delusion right? as, as some people like to, to act like. They just had the same delusion because they weren't even thinking Christ is coming back. They were yeah. distraught. Yeah. They were down and out. Yeah. They were cowering like, oh, what are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but once Jesus showed up and, and showed who he was, mm. it's that new energy yeah. that revised us up. And, and sometimes that happens. I don't know about you. I got plenty of stories where I was just down and out and, and Christ had to come whisper in my ear, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> remember who I am. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that goes back to the importance of, um, you know, reading and meditating on the scriptures. You know, uh, if you don't read, you don't know. No. You know, and and it's just so important to to do that. And there are still going to be those times when, like Thomas, we doubt. Yeah. And I think it's important to also consider um, when we come out of those moments, or even when we're in those moments, how are we going to respond? And I think Thomas's response is. Uh, it's it is encouraging and it is inspirational because we see him going from as Pastor Mike mentioned on Sunday, doubting Thomas to in his response, yeah. the, you know, uh, theological Thomas. Or I don't remember exactly what, what Pastor said. Oh yeah, but but, but you know, you, you see a shift there, and he goes from doubting to saying, "My Lord and my God." It's like yeah. he, he has that full understanding in that moment and and we have that we have that in the canon of scripture we have the full book the full story we know the beginning we know what's going on and we know how things are going to end and and that can and will transform the way we live if we let it yeah and, and it will get us through those seasons where we do doubt and and when we do struggle but uh, often we like to turn to our own wisdom and our own way first yeah and we try our own things and and we fall flat on our face at least i can speak for myself i often fall flat hey. on my face and it's when we turn to the lord and and trust in him uh and acknowledge him in all our ways that he may straight our paths oh yeah yeah so it just it kind of comes full circle to what i think i mentioned earlier because uh, right after that when he's all fired up he recognized jesus christ as lord mm -hmm. And, and Christ says, uh, this uh, famous saying is, blessed, you, uh, blessed are you, uh, like you, cause because you've seen, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Yeah. And uh, I love the way Pastor Mike kind of intro that into, uh, it's more than just seeing with eyes. Yeah. And so here we are, we haven't seen with our eyes. We're not eyewitnesses, mm. uh, but what we do have, it's kind of like you, you were uh, telling us, is we have the word. Yep. And Peter's, uh, Pastor, I believe my, Pastor Mike spoke on that. Peter says we have a more sure witness because mm. we have the word. Mm, that's so good. We have the word. We're not like, this is not what so-and-so says. This yeah. is what thus, we know is what thus says the Lord. Yeah, that's right. Because it's recorded. Yeah. And, and I don't have to say, did you hear what, that one speech so-and-so? No. Did you read? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you can. It's available yeah. to you. Yeah. This is God's revelation to us. Uh, this is our gift so that um, we can see in our spiritual mind yeah. and still have not seen God in the flesh, still believe. That's right. That's that blessing that we have. So, it yes, is. it is. And the Holy Spirit who illuminates our, our eyes and our heart to the wonderful truths that are in God's word. Yeah. You know, I know we were talking earlier again, but it's the same Holy Spirit that, you know, equipped and enabled the disciples to do all that they did. It's the same Holy Spirit that resides in us and that will equip uh, and, and uh, encourage us with what we need to do the same thing. Yeah. To fulfill the Great Commission and to live in accordance with God's will. And God's way so it's not a matter of can we do it can we evangelize can we fulfill these things can we have this peace that surpasses all understanding it's a matter of, of will we will we because the Holy Spirit ultimately is the one who will equip us and enable us to do those things we just have to rely fully on the Spirit and, and not on ourselves exactly we often do yeah you know. exactly well brother we probably could go on for a forever yeah, <laughs> talking about really all the goodness uh that i mean it was a great sermon uh i want to invite you all to come out this sunday uh you don't get a, a chance to get a teaser because uh, pastor mike ain't here but i can already tell you um 
by by the spirit is going to be a great sermon. <laughs> that's, right. that's the that's the teaser that you need. It's going to be really good. It's yeah. going to be a great sermon. It's going to yeah. be so relevant. It's going to fire you up. You're going to be excited about all that that God is still doing. As uh, as we <clears throat> begin to wrap up uh, this great story, mm. and uh, so yeah, I just nine o'clock and eleven o'clock. There's room in the building. We would love to see you there. Uh, if you can pray us out, brother. I'd love to. Yeah. Father, we thank you uh, again for your word and just for the wonderful truths and the wonderful encouragements that we have uh, in your word and that we see here uh, in John chapter 20, uh, God, that uh, just uh, just like Thomas, we do have those, those moments in our lives where uh, we struggle and we may doubt, uh, Lord, but uh, just as, as your son Jesus was with Thomas, Lord, you are patient with us because you love us and you care for us and you want us to see and you want us to believe. And Lord, we can see uh, through your word and we can believe in your son, Jesus Christ. And your word teaches that if we do, we will be forever saved and forever safe. And we thank you, Lord. And we praise you for that. God, thank you for uh, the peace that you also provide uh, to each and every one of your children each and every day. It is a peace that surpasses all understanding and it is a peace that is firmly rooted in who you are in what you say and in what you have done on our behalf out of your great love mercy goodness and faithfulness to us all things lord that are exemplified through your son jesus christ lord as we go through this week help us to be bold in all that we do and in all that we say knowing that you are with us that you are leading us and that you are guiding us and that it is your Holy Spirit who will enable and equip us with what we need to say when we need to say it. Lord, thank you for uh, Brother Randy and for his faithfulness uh, on this podcast and in all the ways that he encourages us. Thank you for Pastor Mike and his faithfulness in preaching. Thank you for the opportunities that we have to continue diving deeper into your word. May we stay faithful uh, to you and to your word as we go through our week. Lord, we love you. We love your son, Jesus. We pray these things in his name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir, for yeah, a great podcast. See, man, it wasn't that hard. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was great. <laughs> you just sit here talking about Jesus. You know? right. right. I see. Now I believe. And uh, and I'd love to, to be back on uh, at some point in the future. Cool. So We're looking forward to having you. Deal. And thank you guys for tuning in. You have a great rest of your day.